All right, welcome back guys to MMG. All right, this video, we're gonna do the charts and uh, try to figure out where this market's heading besides, you know, all time markets high, all three markets, all time high. Highs forever. This will never end. <laughs> Everything's gonna be great, all right? Markets will go up forever, guys. All right. Um, First of all, not financial advice. Consult your financial advisor before uh, doing anything. Equity, stocks, bonds, cryptos, everything, you know, super volatile, super risky. Do not invest anything you're not willing to lose or lose sleep over. Stops in place. Emotions out. This is more of an educational channel. Learning how to trade and listening to me and my opinions on uh the crazy economic sphere we're in go to my website 15 percent off i will you have to you apparently you do you need the link <laughs> um i'll put the link in the description section also i will post it in the comment section and it's 15 percent off mainly because uh you know it's the holiday season people are spending money and everyone has to buy gifts. I get it. So I'll give you guys a 15% off. Usually it's 10. Uh, you just go to my website, MMG Invest. Go to the home page. Click uh, the video on the home page so you know what to expect. And I highly suggest you join the private group because that's where um, I found a lot of good new stocks possible opportunities and um there's a bunch more and there's more coming this weekend and uh, as time goes on i research more and i find more opportunities and uh that's how the private group really pays off but uh you click right here and then uh or you just use the promo code uh in the description then you go to the cart, just add this to your cart. Here's your uh, cart. And then uh, apply discount code. I believe the discount code is um, 15 for me, something like that. I'll post it in the description and in the comment section. All right, so markets, all time highs, trade deals. They're going to work out. We'll see. I doubt it. Or even if they do work out, it doesn't matter. It's, you know, buy the rumor, sell the fact. Once the trade deal, if there is a trade deal or any sort of deal, they'll hype it up. And the short term, the market might go higher. But then there's, there's nothing else to look forward to besides the 2020 election. And then just maybe, just maybe, it might dawn on investors and speculators that if the market falls or keeps falling, or maybe Trump might not win. I don't know, guys. You know, with Trump, I a lot of people think I support him. And I do. I mean, he's way better than anyone else, right? But uh, And he buys us more time. Is he controlled opposition? I don't know. If he is, that's scary because they did a really good damn job of convincing everyone or a lot of people that um, he's not part of the, you know, the, the elite, right? But if he is controlled opposition, I mean, and it's very possible. I mean, a lot of his promises really haven't been met. They've been sort of met, but then he backtracks on it. We're still losing freedoms. And I, you know, I view him as a boomer. <laughs> they just don't understand. They, he's not like constitutional. I don't want to get into it. Either way, um, something big is going to happen in 2020. We're, we're, I'm going to show you guys yields, treasury bond yields in the bond market. We're going to talk about everything in this video. This video is going to be long, but extremely informative. And listen, you're going to learn something. And 
my videos, they're usually weeks ahead of time. They're, that's the point, right? I'm trying to predict the future. I'm not a prophet. But I'm going to give you guys scenarios and we're going to try to brainstorm in game theory what's coming in the next few days, weeks, and months. And you have to keep that in mind as you watch my video. All right. All right. So the VIX is the volatility index. It's at all-time lows again. What happens every time it hits all-time lows? It spikes back up. Because it can't stay down there forever. And it's a good barometer. Although, <laughs> right after Trump's election, I mean, it was dragging for like more than half a year. And that that entire time, the stock market was going up and up and up and up, right? The longest running rally ever in history <clears throat> in 2018. Then at the end of 2018... The market dumped 20%. And this is when the VIX shot up. I took that trade. I even made a video about it. I'm like, listen, guys, I'm going to put on a position long on VIX. And there was a few guys who were like, dude, that was awesome because it was the greatest trade ever. Yeah, it was a good one. Well, we're down here again, right? Volatility's down. So I'm just showing you guys. So I wouldn't be surprised if we get a nice spike up. That, does that mean the market's crashing? No, it just means, you know, eventually this momentum to the upside, it's going to lose steam. And then there's going to be a pullback. Correction, something. So keep that in mind. Something to watch. For you. By the way, I mean, day traders don't watch me, but maybe they do. I don't know. A swing trader will watch me because I'm a swing trader. I'm... I'm, I'm intermediate to long term, right? My trades could last weeks and months. Currently, I've had a, a, a bullish long position on, on gold ETFs for um, weeks now. Weeks. About a month. I'm, I'm not sure. Although gold is just... It's dropping. As I'm doing this video... It's all right. I'm not um I'm not panicking. All right. So the dollar, let's take a look at the dollar. So remember, I drew this a long time ago, cup and handle, and then the dollar did finally test 100 and that as of late in the past few uh <clears throat> weeks, it's uh pulled back significantly. Uh, it did test that my blue equilibrium line, which nobody uses, but it's really great for long-term, uh, trading or even swing trading. And it bounced off of it twice now, which is pretty much the 97 handle. Now here's what's interesting. Is the dollar going to rally? Continue. Well, is it going to rebound? And go straight back up and test 100. I don't know. But I do know there's resistance at, 90, at the 98 handle. So. The dollar. I just say let's watch it. Because I don't know what's going on in China and Europe. Because China needs dollars. Europe needs. Uh, well investors will run to the dollar as a safe haven in Europe if there's like a Brexit, right? But uh, looking at these moving averages, it looks also Trump and the Fed wants a weaker dollar for trade purposes, for the trade deficit and to keep the market going higher, right? For people need to, so people chase yield, which is the stock market and uh, possibly bonds. But, um, Right now, the here's the thing. I think the dollar could trade sideways. And the reason I, I don't want to say that the dollar is going to sell off just yet is because if the market sells off in a really big way, we finally get the big correction, the dollar could easily rally even higher, up to 100 or higher, 
on the index. This is the dollar index, the DXY. And this is a daily chart. So I don't want to jump the gun on it. It looks like the moving averages are crossing to the downside and we'll get more dollar weakness. Next major, major support would be the 94. 94 handle. Well, no, no, 96. So, yeah, it can sell off to 96. And then later in 2020 at some time, maybe the first quarter, second quarter, we finally get that stock market crash. Then it'll rally and go past 100. So it's something to watch. For, for the short term, dollar weakness is positive for metals, right? It's even positive for the stock market. All right. Cover that. So let's take a look at... Well, let's start taking a look at the at the market, at the ind indices, S&P 500. So I posted this in the newsroom. I said, you know, the S&P should pull back. Of course, it's not pulling back because it came out with another bullshit news trade deal announcement, which is BS, by the way. I'll show you guys later when we cover the news. And we were on a nine sell on the daily for the S&P 500. And look at the RSI. Look at the MACD. Look at the TM squeeze. It's all overextended. Look at the momentum oscillator. All overextended. So, yeah, it's going above the nine sell right now, this candle. But this could reverse very quickly. I still think that we're going to get a pullback. It's actually better if we, if we got a pullback, even for the markets, because if this just keeps going higher and higher and higher, we start going, I don't know, <laughs> to like 34, 3,500 on the S&P 500, that'll be a blow off top. So a pullback would actually be actually positive for the long term going into 2020 for the markets to be going higher. So they're idiots for juicing the market. But uh, I still I still think we're going to get a pullback. All right, guys. Yeah, by the end of this week, by Friday. Today is today's Thursday. So tomorrow should be the start of a pullback. I mean, this just can't keep going. <laughs> it's extremely overextended. The four hourly is even overextended. So, you know, this morning we're trading. It is 10 a.m., uh, Thursday, right? The seventh, and um, you know, right now this is a little euphoric. I expect a pullback. Here's the SQQQ. If you wanted to short the market with an inverse ETF, so you're going long, but it's shorting the market, right? Um. This looks extremely oversold, just saying. Not a buy recommendation or anything, but just saying. This is the VIX again. All right, here we have, I'm going to cover this in a little bit. Let's take a look at the fangs. This is the daily chart of the fangs. It's overextended as well, the FANG index. If we go to a weekly, I'm just curious what number it's on using the TD indicator. It's on a four count, so weekly looks bullish, I guess. Either way, the daily, it's the daily that I'm, you know, for the next few weeks that I'm looking at. The three count did not make it above the two count. I do expect this to also pull, pull back and pull down the rest of the market. Russell 2000 is actually on a nine sell as well on the daily. And that is our, and the Russell's already pulling back. And look at the oscillators, all extremely overextended. Although, look at this, I, I drew this a while ago. This was a bull flag and it did break out of the bull flag, but this is probably the extent 
of the of the rally. So, you know, I draw I draw these arrows, but that doesn't mean it's going to go that high. I'm just showing you guys direction. You never know how high it's going to go. This is a little far off though. All right. And now I expect a pullback. How uh deep will the pullback be? I'm not sure. But I expect a pullback. And it's already begun on the Russell. So the S&P right now is hitting all-time highs. So is the Dow. But the Russell's already pulling back. And the Russell, I believe, is smarter than the rest of the markets. And it hasn't... The Russell 2000 has not rallied to all-time highs. The all-time highs was way back in 2018 of September. Or August of 2018. The Russell 2000... Is 2,000 like mid-sized companies domestic companies for the U.S. This is the barometer of the real economy. It's not the S&P 500 and the Dow and all that. Those are international companies. They're globalist global companies, right? And um, though they have been benefiting off of capital flight from around the world running into U.S. markets. That's why they're hitting all-time highs. And who knows, you know. The Fed's like probably just in the background, like printing endless cash and pumping it in the market. <laughs> Who knows? Like I wouldn't be surprised. And you know they just buy the end the indexes, which drags everything up higher and higher. Although the underlying smaller companies aren't doing good. All right, that's a theory. I'm not saying that's really happening, but it's my theory. All right, it's just you know I wouldn't be surprised. Just throwing it out there. Daily chart on the NASDAQ overextended all the oscillators. And it broke out, right? From this ascending triangle. And uh, it also, you know, had a 9 sell yesterday, but it's going past it. But sometimes you get that. The price will go past the 9 sell in the indicator on the TD. And then later it'll drop. So I expect a pullback. On the NASDAQ as well. I mean, eventually it's going to lose momentum. It just can't keep going and going like the Energizer, buddy. Nothing does that forever. It, it, what I'm trying to say is it's unsustainable. This is sort of very complacent, euphoric type of uh, buying that's going on here. Going into the holiday season, and earnings aren't that great. And, uh, you know, eventually, for tax purposes, people are going to take profits as well. So a pullback is normal, and I expect it soon. All right, guys? All right, what else do we have here? This is Bitcoin. All right, so my last video was pretty harsh. And um, I'm going to make my next Bitcoin video... I'm going to give you guys the positive outlook and what could possibly happen that's positive for the price of Bitcoin. It's just for the short term and the intermediate term, I'm just bearish. That's all it is. And I want to see a few things happen. And if I, could, if I see these things happen, I'll, uh, I'll give you guys my bullish uh, outlook for Bitcoin. My next separate video, all right? All right, uh, gold and silver. Wow, it's really dumping. Of course, as I make a video. Yeah, it's breaking down, motherfuckers. Um, the banks, you know, they always find the best uh, opportunity to smash it. Well, this is a buying opportunity, so it's not that bad. Um... The three-day chart, still bullish. I mean, still in the green cloud. I'm going to look at bonds, and that's why I think, you know, this is sort of like a head fake, a huge shakeout, and it's going to rally back up. It's because I'm looking at bonds. But, um, yeah, it's not good that it's breaking below on the daily here on the 100-day on the moving average. I still don't think it's going to go much lower because smart money's buying. They're buying every dip. 
Asia buying every dip. This is just the paper markets, you know, dumping it on purpose to possibly cause some sort of panic selling in metals as the all three markets hit all time highs. <laughs> so I think this is a nice shakeout. If anything, I should be adding more to my position, although I'm running out of cash. So go to my website. <laughs> so I could buy this dip. And so I could add more shares. <clears throat> and uh, I'm still up on my leverage GTF, but uh, I lost all my gains on it. So I'm looking to add to that position. add more and more all right so this is gold 12 hour chart listen this entire move right here see what i'm circling right here this is consolidation so this is a pullback in consolidation so with consolidation it's like a spring winding up winding up winding up and then eventually a huge move either to the upside or downside i think it's going to be to the upside i still think it's to the upside i know it's selling off right now people are panicking spiraling in the private group all right um but this is consolidation Also, if you look at it, it's still a pretty nice bull flag. Sort of a bull flag. It's not perfect. But close enough for me. Although, I thought it would have broken out by now. It just hasn't. Because of um, all-time highs. Alright, so... I mean, that's a perfect textbook bull flag. Although it's dropping pretty freaking hard right now. Let's take a look at the four hourly time frame. What is this? There's no breaking news. The thirty-eight fit the thirty-eight point two fib retracement is at fourteen sixty fourteen sixty-one somewhere around there. There is some support around this area though. There was a lot of buying volume. I think this is still a shakeout and it's gonna rally up. You guys will see. Um Here, the three-day chart. Still positive. Because it's oversold. It's going to reset back to the upside. Nobody looks at the three-day chart. Which chart actually had a good countdown? Here's the weekly chart. Here we go. I have a buy signal right now on the weekly chart. So we just had a nine count sell off and a perfected nine buy signal on the weekly chart. That's why I'm not panicking. Because I bought more shares yesterday or the day before. So right now my count is getting hit decently. But um, I'm not panicking just yet. If anything, I mean, I could add to this position, the long position right now. And if things get a little hairy, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll buy the inverse ETF and hedge a, a move down. That's why you never go all in or all out because you're going to get wrecked doing that. That's why you should only trade like 3% of your entire like capital. That's money management. If you don't know that, you didn't watch my three hour long video. I'm going to make another tutorial video just covering portfolio allocation and trading strategies, this and that. It's just, you know, it takes time. 
And I'm going to be out of town again. I'm leaving later tonight. And I'll be out of town till like Tuesday. So I might not make a video all week. I'll try. But, you know, I can't make any promises. Alright, here's the important stuff. So here's the U.S. 10-year yield, right? The candlestick is uh, gold. I could change it so it's easier to see. Oh, no, that was gold. Never mind. So the line up here, this is gold. The candlestick is uh, the 10-year yield. You guys can see the in, the <clears throat> the relationship here, right? The inverse relationship. Yields drop, gold rallies. Not always though. As, as you can see right here, yields dropped, so did gold. But look, back here in 2008. So yields rallied up and then they fell with the stock market and gold fell with it. So why am I showing you this? Because I'm going to show you guys another chart of the possibility of gold dropping if the stock market like drops in a big way. Which I'm not saying is going to happen anytime soon. I'm just giving you guys a heads up. Alright, so I just wanted to show you guys this correlation here. And zooming in here, let's go to the daily. Gold's dropping, right? But that's because yields are right now rising. They're exploding, the bond yields. Which is funny because if yields are rising, the stock market should be dumping. It's just not dumping yet because investors are stupid. But they're going to find out soon. That's what's also going to cause a pullback. If Because yields have been rising in the past few days like in a really big way. So that's another reason why gold's dropping right now. Now what's going to happen? Yields are going to drop. Why is that? Because the Fed's going to intervene. Because they can't let yields just keep going up like this. So this is the 10-year yield. Where's the 2-year? Let's uh, take a look at the 2-year. Here's uh, the two year. It's also looking a lot like the 10 year and it's really taking off in a big way. Also sh sending gold down. So this looks like it's going to keep rallying and gold's going to keep dropping, right? If that happens, all right, so let me draw this. If the two year keeps going up like this, including the 10-year, looks just like the two-year, the interest rates, what happens? Well, for one, gold will tank. Okay? But if that happens, the stock market's going to crash. That's why I'm betting right now for the short term that gold's going to rebound and go back up. And not just that, even if this does happen, even if yields keep spiking higher and higher, gold might actually just rally anyways despite this correlation because that's what it did last time and every time. So the beginning, okay, so the start of the crash, gold rallies, so to silver, right? But halfway, I would say 30, 40% are halfway during the crash of equities metals will start crashing with it because of margin calls because everyone starts selling hitting the oh shit button sell everything button including mining stocks including gold just go straight to cash and that's when you get the stock market and metals gold and silver crashing now I don't know how long metals will crash with the stock market when this happens which I do not know when this is going to happen, okay? But when it does, I don't know if metals will recover much quicker than last time. Because it happened last time during 2008. Because everyone remembers. It's, it wasn't that long ago. It was 10 years ago, right? 
So people remember, right? And um, they might just buy metals as the market's crashing and metals might recover really quickly. It might just be a weak event. It might just be a three-day event. I don't know. I'm not a prophet. Or it might just play out just like last time. Like three months of downside in gold and silver as the stock market crashes. So that during that time, what do you do? You look at it as a buying opportunity and for metals and mining stocks. And you look at it as a great shorting opportunity to short the shit out of everything. Or, or go long on inverse ETFs like I showed you earlier in the beginning of this video. I don't like shorting. It's really risky. There's a few stocks I'm really looking forward to short. <coughs> Tesla. And, um, but, uh, I, I really like going long with inverse ETFs. So ETFs that go up in price, shorting the ETFs that are normally bullish, right? I mean, honestly, if you're not an active trader, don't worry about it. But um, the private members know what I'm talking about. All right. So I just want to show you guys that right now. So if yields keep spiking, that's I'm going to close this here. But I want to talk about this chart. If yields, the two-year, the three-year, whatever, 10-year, if they keep rising... The market all-time highs are, are, are this will be it, <laughs> all right? So I'm betting on the fact that the bond markets, the yields are going to drop. And it's going to be because the Fed's going to do something. They, they have to come out and say something. Maybe they're doing something in the background. But they're not going to let yields spike like this. If, they, if the yields keep spiking like this, this is it, guys. This will be the all-time highs probably in our lifetimes. I don't know. Or at least for the next few decades or who knows. Probably for our lifetimes. I, I wanted to say that. That's a big statement, but... Alright. It's the biggest bubble ever in human history as well. So... Alright. Um, so, the gold line... That's gold again. This purple line... Is the 10-year yield again. And... Uh, this blue line is the S&P 500. So let me take away the, the yield because we just looked at that. So here's the S&P 500, the blue line. Here's gold. All right. Now, what? this is a weekly chart, okay? 2001 is back here. So we had a bear market because the NASDAQ bubble popped and the dot-com bubble popped, right? And uh, it's it's in red. It's highlighted in red, the shaded area. That's the bear market. Again, here's a mortgage-backed security crisis shaded in red. This red line, I put this red line here because, first of all, we had a 20% drop. So this blue line, right, the S&P 500, this was a 20% drop. And also, yields spiked. So the purple line, it goes straight up. So let me remove the markets. Let me remove gold. As you can see, yields, the 10-year, since the beginning of... Uh, 2016 it's been going up and then finally the market cracked and that's because the Fed started raising interest rates at the beginning of 2016 right and yields have been going up and finally we had a 20% correction in the market So let me show you the market. All right, here's S&P 500. This is a weekly chart. So here's 2016. So the S&P's been going up since 2009. This is 2009 back here. As you can see, 2009 back here. 
And that was the bottom. And the S&P's been rallying, right? Okay. Well, they started raising rates beginning of 2016, right? They did one rate rate hike, 25 basis points. And then they didn't do any until until the election. So the beginning of 2017, they started raising rates. And the rates were risen up near 3%, right, on the 10-year. Well, no, not the 10-year. Just saying overall. And then we, and then the market finally cracked and had a 20% drop right here. But then it rebounded. And now the 10-year is starting to creep back up. And this will cause the market to sell off again. So I'm betting on the fact that they're going to somehow get the market or the yield to drop for the short term. If they don't, then this will be the big one coming probably first quarter of 2020. Maybe the second quarter of 2020, but soon, real soon. All right. All right, let's get back to um, gold. <clears throat> so the yield right now is rising. Gold's dropping. If the yield drops, gold will rebound and rally back up. If the yield keeps rising, the interest rates on the bonds, then gold's probably going to keep dropping. And the market but then as soon as the market cracks then gold will start rallying so it'll be a huge head fake either way i think gold's gonna run back up towards the end of this year and possibly test 1600 or go a little bit higher 1680 although i, I can change my mind but i'm still i'm still uh thinking that's gonna happen right for the short term now later on, can the can gold sell off in a really big way? Yes, if the market really crashes. I'll keep you guys updated, right? So just wanted to show you guys that correlation. As you can see the rates in uh October October 2018 spiked and then we had a 20% drop in the S&P 500. And more in the other in the indices, right? And that's when gold started taking off and rallying. Was when rates finally hit their, uh, uh, I'd like to say, 10-year high. And then they started dropping. And then that signaled gold to rally. Alright, so I want to show you guys something else here. Really interesting. Let's, uh, well, I should have left that. Hold on. All right. So you see this white right here? I pasted and copied it from the previous bull market. See how that fits? All right. So where are we compared to the last breakout in the in the previous bull market in gold and silver, right? I think we are somewhere right here. See that? This is where we're at. Let me draw an arrow. We are right here. If you want to compare it to the last bull market, that's where I think we're at. So if I want to, this isn't going to exactly play out just like it did last time. It never does, but it'll be similar to it, right? So if I want to take this, if I think we are about right here, right? And compare it to the current price action, I'd say it's something like this. All 
All right, so you guys get an idea. So we are right comparing it to the last bull market. I think we're about right here. Now, if you want me to zoom out here, I know you want to see what this is going to look like. I'm expecting something like this in gold. Now this actually only goes up to about 28, 3,000 in gold, which is absolutely. I mean, I I think gold should be 3,000 right now. <laughs> All right should be right now so i honestly think it's going to go much higher and it's going to go into a bubble five thousand i'll be happy i'll start to i'll definitely be taking profits uh if it runs to eight thousand then it's definitely a bubble if it runs to ten thousand it's hyperinflation you don't want it to run to ten thousand all right because that means it's mad max although that might be the best thing for humanity i I don't know, guys. Just hope for the best. Prepare. <laughs> At least, you know, uh, buy, take profits on the way up and buy real things. Like a robot that could farm for you in your backyard. I just saw, it was an advertisement on my Instagram. I posted that uh, recently on my, on my Twitter and Instagram. So, you know, I don't really know how to farm. I wasn't raised on a farm. But, uh, <laughs> um... And I don't want to hire people, you know, that's just a pain. People suck. You have to give them like all sorts of benefits. That's why employers are going to be firing people that can't pay for all that. So automation, right? It's great for the entrepreneur. So that's why I highly suggest you guys try to make as much money as possible off of this giant wealth transfer and uh, automate and build a business. You'll be fine. Relying on current jobs, not guaranteed, all right? Especially with automation and the fact that we're in a bubble and there's going to be massive layoffs and competition is going to be so high, so high. People are going to, they're going to have to really work, guys. Work hard. All right. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's what I'm expecting. I think we're right here. This is where I think we're at. Now, the other scenario, if the stock market crashes like really big, like the final crash happens like soon, in the next few weeks or starts today, I don't know, then it would actually be something like this. But that doesn't look right. Although... This could be the other scenario, right? That would mean that metals will fall all the way back down to 1200 And this can be the scenario. If the stock market... If, if bonds keep rising and rising, and the stock market finally, uh, you know, shit hits the fan, right? But I'm hoping that doesn't happen. I'm hoping we still have a little bit we get a small pullback on the markets as of, you know, in the next few weeks and yields drop because the Fed's going to intervene. Something's going to happen, right? They're going to do something to get the yields down. Or the, Although the bond market is much larger than the stock market and you can't really manipulate it. So um, I really hope that uh, yields drop one more time for or at least a few more weeks or months. And we're sitting at, uh, currently, we are right here. Actually, this looks much better. There we go. Or right here. This looks, this is what I expect. All right, so let's talk about some news. And also, the yield curve. Let me show you guys. So... This is what the yield look curve on the left here looked like uh, right before um, the market's dumped, right? It was inverted. Now watch it as I play it here. And then it falls back down. But when it does that, stock market's crashing. So where are we currently? So this is what it looked like right before the market's dumped, the yield. Uh, let 
the yield curve. This is what it looked like right before 2008, 2009 crash. What does it look like today? This is what it looks like today. This looks weird. But this is what it looked like a few weeks ago, a few months ago when it inverted. So this is when it started inverting. See? Right here. Boom. It inverted. This was March of this year. It inverted. And then there's a little bit of lag time from the inversion until the market's dump. It could be like 6 to 18 months. That takes us into 2020. So it's we're still in the phase of the lag, right? And the markets are just hitting all-time highs. So let me fast forward the yield curve right now to present. It looks like it wants to drop. I, you know, it looks like it wants to drop. But if it starts inverting again, because right now yields are really spiking. That's another reason why metals are just tanking today. But uh, I think it's gonna, it's gonna come to an end. The yields spiking like this fairly soon. Hopefully today, tomorrow, or next week. By the end of today. I hope yields finally uh, sell off or the interest rate, the yields fall and bonds uh, go back up because when the yield goes up, that means nobody's buying bonds and that's probably because the stock market, all markets, all three, all three all time highs, right? <laughs> and I'm referring to the Trump tweet. That's why I keep making fun of it. All right, so let's start looking at some news. <clears throat> so Ray Dalio, largest fund manager in the world, literally sounds like me. Uh, you guys should watch it. I posted it in the free newsroom, the videos. He's basically saying what I'm saying in just a real nice, polite way. This was early morning yesterday. Nobody paid attention, obviously. Markets all-time highs. All three markets, right? He basically said everything that I've been saying. I don't want to cover everything because there's too much, right? Misallocation of assets, fiscal deficits. The the Fed is behind the curve. They don't they don't have much rates to cut before they hit zero. Once we hit zero, what's going to happen? Helicopter money. They're forced to just print trillions. Um, the ISM non-manufacturing beats expectations. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to revisit those numbers and downgrade them in a few months or a year. Yeah, watch this video right here. Uh, billionaire investor Paul Tudor Jones says markets would tank if Warren gets elected, which is absolutely true. Also, Tudor Jones, he's not a gold bug, but he also said he's buying gold. There's a bunch of billionaires who have hated metals for the last like 10 20 years and they're actually saying that they're buying so what does that tell you they're extremely worried and they know what's going on guys they all know but they want to get on record that they said to the public you should buy metals because they want it on record so no one could say hey you didn't warn us and they also want to take uh you know credit for warning everyone like they're heroes or something So, Diamond, I, of course he's going to say that. You have to understand, J.P. Morgan is the Fed, all right? These big banks are the Fed. That's what the Fed works for, guys. Um, Deutsche Bank, again, that, Deutsche Bank went under a few years ago. It's just essentially a zombie bank at this point, and... Um, but can it f file for bankruptcy? I guess, but I guarantee you that Germany's not going to let that happen. They're going to just keep it propped up, and they'll they'll do whatever is necessary. 
So Christine Lagarde, who said, people shouldn't have savings. They should be happy to have jobs. The new uh, uh, central bank uh, head is uh, ready to print endless money. That's why she said that. Because when they print money, guys, your savings evaporates. So does your debt, but so does your savings. And guess what creates capital investment and strong economies? Savings. Because if you don't have savings, you can't build businesses. You can't, if you don't have savings, you're just constantly in perpetual debt and paying interest on the debt. And you're a serf, you're a slave, get it? If you don't have savings, you can't you can't buy the MMG report and you can't invest money into the stocks and they're not going to go up. I mean, you're not going to take advantage of them going up and that's what happens. That's why you need to save money and then somehow protect it from it being destroyed from inflation. So the the repo market, repo madness, right? Uh, it it's probably was set. It was probably created by J.P. Morgan, and why is that? Because J.P. Morgan just positioned itself for a huge stock market crash. Uh, they bought bonds. Now, can they bought long term bonds? Remember that yield curve I just showed you. So when the market tanks, right? What happens is the yield curve does. The long-term bonds stay high, the, the yield on the long-term. They stay the highest out of the rest. So if you buy 30-year uh, bonds, you might be okay. But I wouldn't risk it. So JP Morgan's getting out of cash, probably because he's expecting the value of the dollar to get eviscerated in the next uh, market crash because the Fed's going to come out with a bunch of QE and the dollar index is going to tank. And we're going to start seeing some decent amount of inflation. That's why the repo market's dried up. It's because JP Morgan is no longer in it. They're not willing to risk lending for short term because they're getting out of dollars. So what does that tell you? So read that article I posted in the newsroom. Also, there is a type of bond you could buy. You know, you shouldn't just buy maybe metals. It's called TIPS. And these bonds are adjusted for inflation. So you actually get a high yielding bond that yields. Uh, it's a hedge against inflation. They're called tips. Um, but do they, But it's based off of the, the way the Fed calculates inflation. And I don't trust that. So inflation will probably be running much higher than what they tell you it is, and your tips aren't might not pay out as much as they should. And the reason they do that is because, you know, a lot of people's entitlement programs are adjusted for inflation. Of course they're gonna lie about it because they don't want to pay out the real value. They don't really want to adjust Social Security and all that for inflation because uh <laughs> it's bankrupt, right? The money's not even in there. It's not in the entitlement programs. So think about it. They don't have the money to pay out the entitlement programs, so they have to print the money. But the printing the money creates inflation. But these entitlement programs are adjusted for inflation. So what are they going to do? Just keep printing and printing and then paying off the entitlements? and then it, What that does is it causes hyperinflation. Do you, do you understand what I just said? They're adjusted for inflation, the entitlement programs, but there's no money to pay them to pay them off. And they can't tax people anymore because they're already taxed to the max. And if they tax, if they raise taxes even a little bit higher, even for the rich, it implodes the economy. So, <laughs> so you have inflation-adjusted entitlement programs. 200 over 200 trillion for the US. Currently it's only at 60 trillion, but it's going to go to the moon as the baby boomers keep retiring, right? And then they have to print to fund the entitlement programs that are adjusted for inflation. So the more they print, the more inflation, but the entitlement programs stay the same 
because they're they're adjusted for inflation. Although they're gonna lie about the inflation. I don't know, guys. It's gonna be a mess. Just a mess. <sighs> All right. Um. What else? What else? Uber. Uber is not doing great. This was a great quote. My grammar and spelling, I'm essentially illiterate. Although I do know how to spell them in three languages incorrectly. And I can speak fluently three as well. Or no, four. All right. Don't. Yeah. Stop. Stop doing that, guys. It's bad for you. It makes you go blind. You know those wise tales your grandparents used to say? Don't do this. It'll make you make you go blind. Don't say lies. Your nose will grow. <laughs> there, there's, there's, those, those sayings are legit. If you know the history behind them and where they came from. And uh, those wise tales. All right. Would China and Russia use a nuclear option? You guys should watch this Mike Maloney video. Really good. All of his videos are really good. Yeah, I mean, it, eventually China just could just sell all the bonds. It will cause problems. They say it won't, but it will. Central banks trying to make cryptos. That's how desperate they are. Hopefully it won't work out for them and no one's going to trust them, especially once the fiat gets hyperinflated away. I am hilarious. That is hilarious meme. Um... You know, Rickards, I don't agree with everything he says. He's pretty smart, but, you know, he's always controlled opposition. Also, as of late, if you look at my camera, if you take a, I have that uh, Tony Robbins book, right? Money, Master of the Game. I read it. Um, He's out on YouTube, and he's in, like, every commercial with that other little real estate guy. And they're really warning everyone about a market crash. And so is uh, Robert Kiyosaki and everyone else. And that's how you know they all want to have the record. They want to be on record warning people right before it happens. And what that's telling me is everyone knows it's coming and it's coming soon. Everyone, all the smart money, everyone thinks it's going to happen in 2020. So do I. And I agree with him. So it's another sign, you know, we're getting close to the end here. So it's hilarious. Bloomberg reports that f the beginning stages of phase one, tariffs are going to get taken off. And then it, they translated it completely wrong. <laughs> it's really not true. So it's fake news again. And of course, guys. No progress is made. Administration is tough on trade with China. Markets sell off. Trade war fears. Administration hits at resolution. Market rallies temporarily on news. No progress is made. <laughs> the trade war cycle. And it's that's all it is, guys. It's a bullshit cycle. There's not going to ever be a trade deal. And I made a video about that. And you should watch it. Uh, but they keep talking about the trade deal to keep the markets... Going higher and higher. It's it's almost as if there's algorithms that are just picking up news uh, titles and then they're just buying based on news events. Yeah, China says it has agreed with the U.S. to cancel tariffs and phases. I mean, even if it's true, even if it's true, the market's going to sell off because now it has nothing to look forward to. But probably the reason they want to do phases is so they can every two weeks say, all right, guys, phase two is a good to go tariffs taking off tariffs. And then the market goes higher and higher. If they plan on really doing that, <coughs> we're going to have a huge blow off top. The higher the market goes, the bigger, the larger the, the fall. And then I just want to show you guys this. This is if you if you don't use um, 
the electoral college, right? Population wise, it's like 60 40 conservative to lib, right? Lefty. And the demographics are changing like rapidly. That's another reason why you want closed borders because those people always vote left. And uh, that's why there is a really a good chance of Warren winning or whoever on the left. And if that happens, you, it's it's literally going to be the USSR. Okay? The, or the, we could call it the USSSA. <laughs> and uh, if the market even starts pricing that in, it'll be a self-fulfilling death spiral to the bottom. And I think that's still possible. Although, let's hope for the best, but you know. Alright guys, um, that's it for now. Go to my website. 15% off. Smash them likes. Leave anything in the comment section. I do comment back. And uh, share my videos. Listen, my channels, they stopped growing completely. It's because I'm, I'm just speaking too much truth. And I, I'd like to even say more, but I can't. Um, because, I, you know, they'll just come after me and take me down. Alright guys, so please share my videos. And uh, until next time.